the next topic what we are going to discuss is hybrid thermoelectric photovoltaic wearable energy harvesters basically hybrid energy scavengers have been fabricated for eeg that is electric ensilo gram eeg it is basically for brain the system in 2008 primarily to avoid sensation of cold induced by a teg in cold weather the figure illustrate the principle of hybridization of a teg and pv pv means photovoltaic cells this is mounted on the outer surface of a radiator and serves as their external heat dissipating surface the teg and pv are connected in two parallel electric circuits and charge one super capacitor additional power gained by photovoltaic cells enables decreasing heat flow through the teg thereby making it comfortable in harsh weather conditions one of this system is shown in the figure there is a one woman wearing a and said the hybrid power supply provides more than 1 millivolt volt volt in most of situation this is more than enough for the two channel eeg application which is basically consuming 0.8 milli watts the absolute and relative input power gain from the thermoelectric and pv power supplies constantly varies thereby reflecting variations in both the illumination level and the heat transfer from the head a power of 45 milliwatt was generated by pv cells in direct sunlight while a power of 0.2 milliwatts has been measured in the office far from the window in a cloudy day the teg provides much more uniform power output than pv cell because it depends mainly on air temperature and wind speed at 22 degree celsius indoors the teg generates 1.5 milliwatts while outdoor at 9.5 degree c with no wind the power increases to 5.5 milliwatts the eeg system is battery free so 
the power exceeding 1 milliwatt is typically wasted however using a super capacitor instead of secondary battery allows demonstration of a nice system features in less than 1 minute after putting it on the charge storage super capacitor is charged from the fully discharged state and the system is self started by the body heat as tested outdoors at a temperature of 7 degree c the device is still very comfortable for the user as a rule of thumb at 10 degree c outdoors pv cell generate 8 times more power than the teg while indoor the later offers 8 times more power than pv cell in the office by using a two way pop power supply that exploits both the heat dissipated from persons temples and ambient light as energy sources the dimensions and weight of the tgs are reduced the location on the hair is much more convenient according to users response in addition the eeg system work much more reliably at high ambient temperature like 28 degree celsius with available light comparison of a tg with pv cell of the same area shows that the latter generate much less power on average because not much light is available indoors where the authors and reader of this book or resting at this moment in addition the quantum efficiency of high efficiency pv cell at low illumination rapidly decreases if high efficiency is obtained in pv cells indoor they could become competitive to a thin teg the power in a teg scales proportional to its thickness at least within the 4 to 10 mm range however even in a 4 mm thin tg it can reach 10 microwatt per square centimeter this is still much better than the power generated by high efficiency monocrystalline silicon cells especially on a 24 hour average so in the picture a the first one it represent thermo pile and the second one it rep- represents 
PV cells that is photovoltaic cell and the third one is a radiator and the fourth one is a hot plate and the fifth one is a thermal shunts. The second figure B it shows two channel EG systems with a hybrid power supply. The theory of a wearable TEG shows that uh, a power of 10 to 30 microwatt per centim square centimeter can be produced for a typical person indoors. These values have been also practically obtained in different prototype of wearable self-powered wireless sensor nodes which can be powered either thermoelectrically or by using hybrid thermoelectric PV generator. The evolution of body power device during six years of their development indicates that only low power application that is those consuming below 1 milliwatt can be unabrasively powered indoors by using human body heat. This means that practically none of the medical devices existing on the market can be turned into self-powered ones. On the other hand, it has been shown that most of the wireless health monitoring and medical devices can work at a power of less than 1 milliwatt with no loss in the signal quantity. Further, miniaturing energy scavengers can be done in case of electronics with less power consumption and with lower power radio. The related research is ongoing worldwide. A simple wireless sensor which is consuming 10 microwatt has already been demonstrated in the year 2008 such sensors can be powered by a very small TEG because only 1 to 3 square centimeter of the human body area is needed to get the required power. However, to obtain a voltage of at least 1 to 2 watt sorry volt in such a small TEG film based miniaturized thermopiles must be developed. In the near future, an optimized wearable TEG is expected to outperform any existing battery of the same weight in less than one year of its use. A possibility of low-cost fabrication technology 
and green energy are also very attractive features of the discus devices therefore a tg can become a good candidate for serving as a light type power supply for low power wearable electronics in the near future the first wearable tg serving as a power supply for a simple wireless sensor one on a wrist has been fabricated in 2004 at 22 degree c it produce a power of 100 micro watts transferred into the electronic mode of a sensor node this is the only 40% of the generated power because of low efficiency of the voltage up converter the latter is a necessary circuit component because the output voltage from the tg fluctuates indoor within 0.7 to 1.5 volt range at 0.7 volt output the power is not only enough for the sensor while at 1.5 volt too much power is produced therefore at the system level a short or long term power reserves must be provided in form of rechargeable batteries or a super capacitor to avoid power shortage by using such energy storage element the power gained by a tg on a occasional basis can be uniformly redistributed and consumed at near constant rate over a long period of time in the first wireless sensor the electronic board was powered by two ni mh cells that is 2.4 volt the power generated at day time was enough for powering the electronics and a 2.4 gigahertz radio and for transmitting several measure parameter to a nearby pc personal computer every 15 seconds some of my reference for making this videos i have given below first one analisa bonfiglo and dilo d rossi wearable monitoring systems springer 2011 second one bookers gong zong yang body sensor network springer 2006 third one is fundamentals of internet of things iot and wearable technology design ieee press will the higher road fourth one wearable sensor fundamentals implementations and applications edited by edward sasunovo second edition so thank you for listening to this video thank you nandu